Hi, I'm James Lamont, Director of the Vadine Center for Rural Economic Development at the University of Minnesota at Crookston. Today, I would like to welcome you to our supply chain series where we'll talk about supply chain shocks. Well, all of us just got through some of the most pronounced and if not acute supply chain shocks that we will live through, hopefully in our lifetimes. During the COVID crisis, everything from toilet paper to eggs to restaurant supplies, you name it, were effectively difficult to find. Surprisingly, the supply wasn't a problem. It was mostly supply chain networks, which were effectively shut down due to hotspots and or other issues within the supply chain vertical. Now, we've focused on more or less the 10 types of commodities that saw the biggest supply chain shocks within the agricultural sector as part of the series. But let's talk beyond facts or beyond um viruses and or um, pandemics when it comes to how we may experience future shocks within our respective supply chains, but also maybe take a good look at what we could do locally or at our farms or within our processing facilities to mitigate our exposure to shock. So first, I'm going to start with production. What creates shocks within production? Well, naturally, there could be anything from disease to other elements such as weather, pests, you name it, natural hazards. We see this all the time throughout the world, and, and it's fortunate that many of us have insurance for it. From there, the same thing happens within storage and processing. If you think about uh, fires, wildfires, uh, any other toxicity or natural hazards that could impact the storage and or processing, same thing within a distribution network. There may be really excessively high fuel prices or transport networks that yeah, if you're in Europe or Asia, you'll see massive strikes or tariffs. Uh, we've, we've gone through a number of those over the last several years. So, I mean, there are a number of shocks, if you will, within the respective supply chain, which you have likely experienced or will likely encounter in the future. Same thing with retail and markets. Well, what if there are issues with respect to import tariffs? What if food prices are sky high or super low? What if locally we see extreme temps and or rainfall that impact the, uh, the respective retail areas? And then naturally, uh, some of the places where we're selling is we're seeing with cold storage with, uh, with respect to vaccine distribution, there may not be the appropriate level of refrigeration capacity to purchase our products. And then on the sub consumption side, same thing, maybe food taxes are too high for people to purchase or seasonality associated with foods or export restrictions. I mean, the list goes on and on. So unfortunately, we're not um, immune from supply chain shocks and we'll likely uh, see them in the future. So how do you mitigate them at the farm level? Thinking about your farm as a business, think about the commercialization you're doing. Um, if you if you kind of look at the the last 30 to 40 years with respect to how we've transformed in terms of uh, producing our uh, respective products, you'll know that um, a lot of places, especially in the developing world, have had extreme issues within their respective centers of gravity to where they can't move their products. So they're more or less more likely than not to not be resilient with respect to some of these supply chain issues. Within the ag tech space, we're able to kind of find pestilence and, 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 and whatnot through precision agriculture or censoring technologies. So we're able to leverage that pretty well to ensure that we capture early on at the farm level, more or less some of the issues that may impact our, uh, our products. Within sort of the community level, within the uh, rural services or entrepreneurship space, there are always financial shocks. We've been very fortunate over the last several decades to where the Federal Reserve and federal government have been able to mitigate the impact associated with credit shocks. But again, that may not be available forever in the future. We may not have the ability to respond to another crisis with four or five, six trillion dollars. Labor shocks. How do you mitigate your exposure to potential labor shortages? Well, these are components that you're going to need to plan for within your respective supply chains so that you understand that just like we saw with the uh, the COVID pandemic, when it effectively shut off our access to labor pools, our ability to export our products or move our products, um, each and every one of these components, if you will, at every level of the enterprise was impacted. So taking a hard look and analysis would be highly recommended at this point. Uh, and we at the Vadine Center would like to work with you if you have any questions regarding mitigating your, your exposure to supply chain risk. Thank you for joining us today.